The problem we find with modernity is the number of outrageous, willfully sinful, utter lunatics we have parading their gobshittery in society, their demonic ideology, as a quasi-inverted, liberated anti-theocracy, deluged in a kind of spiritual anarchy. And it's so repugnant to the thoughts of the chosen and sacred that people like Andrew Tate are just so embarrassing. So embarrassing. You know, I know the Bible has strong words to say about the sexually perverse, which doth include all porn stars, by the way, because it's in the prophecies. And the porn stars are all doomed, basically. They're all going to hell. Uh, this is part of the prophecies of St. John the Divine. That's why so many people are going to hell, right? It's not just the porn stars either. You know, there are other forms of perversion, and they all get nobbled, and they all get fried on Judgment Day, somehow, by God and the angels. When Jesus Christ returns on his mega spaceship, called the New Jerusalem, to Earth, to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? Andrew Tate thinks he's so cool and hard and righteous and well on, right? But he's missing the point entirely of being a true believer at one level. Because God hath no love for haughty eyes or the vain and arrogant. And rude. And he's just an obnoxious little man. And I don't know much about him, but what I've seen, I can see why there's such disgust against him. And the problem is, he probably thinks I'm a faggot. I've never been gay. I'm never going to be gay. And that's where it ends. It's not hard for me not to be gay. It's not like some achievement in my life where I wake up and go, oh, I'm not going to take a woman, woman, man or a woman up the arse today. Nice. Aren't oh, I the winner? You know? But then on the adverse, who I have sex with is not how I identify my psychology. Right? That doesn't make any sense to me. What if I like fluffy bears and I wanted to have sex with them? What if I was a deviant, deranged motherfucker I like to put my willy in cods or fish, like some fisherman recently got in trouble for bestiality for. Right? It's, the, it's his rights to identify as a fish fucker, not seen as, as legitimate as everyone else's. Personally, I've never intentionally gone near a person's arsehole during coitus. I just think it's grim. And I think anyone who does that is pretty repugnant, right? But then my mother's some kind of Puritan nun trained as a convent and just is a saint angel and she, she never does anything wrong. She's done one thing wrong in her whole life and that was when she was at convent school, when she was new to it, so it's probably some initial pressure. I think it was her rebellion against idolatry personally, but she and a friend took all the, all the kids' records and they hurled the seven inch singles across the hall and smashed those of them up, right? And it was futile ignorant vandalism when my mum was like 13, 14, 15. I don't know how old she was particularly. But she, the, she, it haunted her. It's haunted her for her whole life. It's the, uh, it's the joke in our family. It's the, it was the height of her rebellion. That. She also once smoked pot but spent the whole night laughing in a restaurant and embarrassed herself and went, never touched it again. I'm like, dude, what's the point? I'm gonna have a laugh. But no, everything's so serious, isn't it? Everyone's so... So serious, and I tell you, there's nothing serious about the following, and that is a world going mental and arguing consistently, daily, perpetually, weekly, in and out, up and down, round and about, forever. It darn well seems these days about the right to identify as a bottom pusher. Okay, and I'm like. If you want to do that behind closed doors with someone you love and cherish and they're recipro reciprocating, I mean, like, we're not going to come in with the angelic Gestapo and bullet your head out, are we? I say angelic Gestapo, not because I'm a Nazi, because I'm not, right? But angels in the apocalypse, they're worse than Nazis. <laughs> they wipe out millions, billions. And that's why you don't want to get on the wrong side of God, right? And yet many people are willfully choosing 
to adopt a life of filth and debauchery. Well, I've been more than liberal with the people to, uh, uh, to allow them in my understanding of ruling to smoke a herbum. Okay, that's technically not legal. But loads of people we love do it. And loads of people would love it. And it's not as bad as they used to think it was or say, even if it does possibly lead to lung cancer. But hey, life worth living in the interim. And I'm not sure it's as bad as pharmacaea or as... Uh, if it is even pharmacare, which is a hellfire sin, but I don't think, because it's from God and Shrub and Jar and the Rastafarians, they love God. Jar is a legitimate name for God, biblically. It's one of the only names in the Bible that, where God is spelt Jar, J-A-H, in capital letters. And they only use capital letters in the Bible about 20 times in the whole book. There's, and, the, and when the capital letters are used in the book, it's either for Lord, Jar, or signs. And there's two examples of this. One is in the Old Testament where the hand writing on the wall, the mysterious hand they all see writing on the wall, the message, um, that was one. And they write down the exact message in the Bible. And you can look it up online. I can't remember. It's weird language. But I do know what it I can remember re researching it and what it meant. And it's quite interesting stuff, really. Uh, so that was a collectively witnessed quasi-hallucination that they had back then. They wrote it down in the book. It was from God. It was a fifth-dimensional experience, supernatural, right? And in the New Testament, there's a sign that's printed up that, that St. Paul sees as he's doing his meanderings. And it says, to the unknown God. And, oh man, I can't tell you what happened when I first read that. And, and, the, and the inspiration I found... In that one line, written in bold capital letters to denote a signpost or a sign on the wall. And so it's interesting that when God is used, sorry, when capital letters are used in the Bible as a sign, it's also for the name Lord and Jah. Right? So that, that's just quite interesting, isn't it? So anyway, we move on. There are, there are a few other examples of capital letters, by the way, but I can't remember them all. I can't remember them offhand at the moment, but you can research them online. Someone's collated all the knowledge already, so you don't have to. Part of the beauty of the internet. Okay, so what we're doing today is uh, we're discussing why the world's got a problem, basically, I think. I think the world has a major problem with obsessing with quite grim things and fighting over the right or the oppression of the right for people to willfully bum one another. And I'm like, well, objectively, standing back from this, I can't really think of much funnier, actually. If you look at it holistically, and just think, what is this nonsense? It's absolutely ludicrous. But there we have it. And, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, but I've got a ghost, there's a phone call. Latest potatoes. Sorry about that. My dear papa bringing me supplies because he still loves me when well, I'm 49 because I'm not successful because I'm Buddha and being the enlightened one which is all I mean by saying I'm Buddha as in I've had enlightenment which I have since 1995 you might not believe me but that's irrelevant it doesn't change the truth okay so uh, anyway back to the chuckles boy is it funny Right, it's all about your dongle, it seems, in this world, day and age. I did politics A-level at a very good school, and sex didn't really come into it. Nowadays, it's like primary manifesto number one. Who do you sleep with? Who do you shag with? Do you do it up the ass? Are you a weirdo? Do you like to change your sex? Are you a freak? Do you identify as a robot? Are you weird? Right, and it goes on and on like this. We haven't even got into the race aspect. Oh, God. No, no, God is not racist, but he is homophobic. There you go, sort that one out. <coughs> You're so stupid mortals. You don't know anything worth knowing about God, really. Not the believers, either. Not, don't say you do. I know so much more about God as a mortal myself on Earth in the 49 years I've been blessed with life than 99.999% of humanity who have ever lived. And guess what? Like Jesus said, I've also been persecuted like a motherfucker for my knowledge, okay? Yes, I've been beaten up and had weapons pulled on me and nearly killed 
and all these sorts of shit because I know there's a God, right? You, you, you more, I know how stupid most of you are out there. You won't begin to tolerate, to appreciate and learn or know the crumbs of supernatural evidence I've had in my 49 years faith, okay? It's just, it's beyond, but I'll tell you why I know. Because I'm schooled enough in science to know you're just not at the level required in the supernatural field of understanding things like the fifth dimension or the astral plane, which is known to be a real thing. It's not made up. It's not hokum. It's not delusion. It's some kind of event that grants you an out-of-body experience into another perception of reality while you're awake. Okay? That's out of this world. Right? And that's not it. Visited by higher beings of light. Right? I mean, what is that from outer space? Possibly to do a new SETI. They're angels. It makes so much sense. When you know that the Bible is talking about angels as aliens from outer space, the whole Bible makes so much more sense to rational minds. Because it is. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The heavens. What's that? It's the universe. They're always talking about space when they talk about heavens in the time. But we've got, we've got it moulded into a transmutational situation in the dialogue of cultures where heaven is meant to be, is, is believed by many, some ethereal, imagined, posthumous existence that is probably not real, right? Because the, the heavens is the universe and we might well immerse as chosen quanta into the universe as part of the colossal matrix or the quantum matrix because I don't want to say matrix as a conspiracy because I don't see God as a conspiracy I don't see the universe as a conspiracy right? that I don't see much on earth as a conspiracy I don't think I think I think there's lots of people who think there's a conspiracy but I tend to think they're morons and I am right in thinking that Okay, I'm not going to go into each and every reason why, but believe me, if you're following the crowd and reading up all this, the vaccine is the mark of the beast bullshit, you're rubbish. You don't know what you're talking about. I know much more than you, and it's time you all shut up. But given that little outburst, I'm not going to leave you on a negative. Do you think I'd do that, my friends? Come, listen to me. I am the illuminated one. And do I have all the answers? Hell no. If I did, do you think I'd be standing here talking to you? I'd be out there, whimsy, uh, up and with a fair maiden of some description, and a, a wonderful holiday retreat with a nice car to get in, and I could legally drive, not being licensed or revoked. And, uh, and generally a huge pile of coke, maybe, because I'm quite an exciting chap, and I want to be. But I've never actually got into cocaine. And that's why my teeth are better than Johnny Depp's, even though they're shocking. Because it was not something for me, coke, really. I, I found it, too, it rotted your intellect rapidly, I found. And it has an adverse effect with the quantum receptors. And the degradation in intellectualism is completely high velocity on cocaine. You can feel it if you're self-aware enough. You can actually feel the depletion in IQ vectors as you're getting high for five minutes at great expense. I don't actually like cocaine much at all. And people who rely on it as a method to socialise and get by, I think are far worse than any addict. The smokers, drinkers, tokers, I don't have a problem with them. Because half of them are legal. Cigarettes and beer are legal, as they should be. Weed should be legal, but as a, for those it benefits. If it makes you paranoid, you shouldn't touch it. But cocaine, oh man, that just makes you retarded. And immoral, very, very quickly. Unless you've got a religious vector going on in your mind. But the people who do cocaine generally don't have a religious vector going on. Or they don't really take it seriously at all. And they might be quasi faithful some of them but it's bullshit they're not if they're doing that they're not but you can smoke weed technically if you believe in god thanks to the rest of variants and jar but i think we've covered that haven't we so anyway i'm not i'm not you know i do think does it make sense that god when he's laid out the rules and smoking weed wasn't one of them um 
that he would burn you for eternity just for feeling the love of God and wanting to enjoy the super that one of his most controversial shrubs applies. That's what I always ask myself. And I can only come to the logical conclusion under a loving, rational, knowing and illuminating God that no, I think this is why I know so much about God. Because I didn't, I'm, I wasn't a pussy. I, I, I mean, I wasn't, you know, I'm not a warrior kind of chap who goes out looking for fights on drinking drugs every weekend. I don't get them at all. And I read quite a lot of books when I was young. I used to be an avid reader, it's why I'm quite vocation. Vo <laughs> Here we go, he screws it up right at the point, doesn't he? Yeah, saw sort of that kind. That's why I'm quite vocabulary. <laughs> vocabulary. <laughs> Astute. I fucked it right up, didn't I? Oh, well, it doesn't matter, let's move on. The um, point is, what is the point? I can't remember what I was talking about. It doesn't really matter. Nothing really matters according to Freddie Mercury. Or is it Metallica? Oh, I get those two mixed up as well. <laughs> the thing is, if you're taking advice from pop stars, they're so widespread and eclectic, their concepts and wisdoms, in inverted commas often, uh, the, I suppose they're all just freedom celebrators of, of a kind in the little TV screen with their awesome skills and awesome instruments. But um, oh, I'm not going to open this can of worms, it would take too long to explain. And I haven't got enough footage left for my camera to explain everything that I wanted to explain. And so I'm going to relax and let you guys work it out, okay? The Bible's there, it's written down, the book of Revelation really find out what the mark of the beast might be. It's not the vaccine. You God! But I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not not all of you are that stupid. Some of you are really fucking thick. But not all of you are that stupid. And it's the ones who understand the breath and words of the scripture who probably aren't as concerned about being vaccinated as believers like me as we are. Okay? I know people who are paranoid as fuck of the vaccine because they think it's the work of Satan. And I can tell you, it's not the same thing. I've studied the school, the book of the apocalypse, for over 25 years. You have no idea what you're talking about. Thank you.